Hello everybody, Josh Placer here. If you're watching this tag, it means the video that you are about to watch is cut from a larger play on Twitch. Of course, the Twitch channel is GW Placer. Be sure to check out the Twitch stream most nights at 10 Eastern if you want to watch these plays uncut and in their entirety. Anyway, hope you enjoy the video. Already in progress from the last part. And then it's really a mind flip when you switch to the hover tank and then you don't have the rotational control, rotational, I mean, I'm sorry, the separate moving and aiming. Now what? Okay, so now... We have our boom, and we go ramming speed. Is that a s death smoke? Yeah. Feels like it would be a lot easier to control if it if the movement wasn't rotational. Oop. What does it mean? I was looking at chat and got alarm, but it doesn't matter. I'll use my death smoke on him. Come on. Weapon. There are depots. Oh. Eat poison smoke. Ow. You can see my own smoke hurts me. That was a really bad miss. Come on. Oh my god. Oh, we're dead. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely, uh, looking at the chat, for example, it's, uh, sitting on the fence, it looks really cool. It's definitely a shooter-style game. Let me see. Maybe we'll try something a little smaller. Okay, so now, this is the rapid fire. Still in my little tank controls. Come on. Yeah, we're dead. Disco laser I'm worn with. <laughs> the answer's gonna have to be this one. Again, you can tell that this was definitely designed deliberately with these kinds of controls. Hmm, apparently the death smoke is blowing up the ammo, too. And 
and I'm keeping the camera like locked on, it would be a whole lot harder, I think, if the camera was moving as well. And if you want to know what I mean by that, I will turn it off in one second once we have a second to spare. So now, you turn it off, and now you have this. I mean, yes, you get a whole lot more range, but this can just... I can just see this being a huge nightmare in terms of <laughs> trying to control things. It's also it can also be very nauseating just to do the speed of the camera. Music, of course, is just really good as well. Like, this is what I mean. Like, there's sometimes I just feels like I cannot hit anything, no matter how I have my cursor on them. And other times I'll just, like, drop in, like, a few seconds. I don't know why that smoke is deadly to machinery, but I'll take it. I know it's probably better to play with the camera unlocked, but as you can see, it just becomes very tricky to move and aim when you're not in the center of the screen. Alright, so now they know I'm here. Those flying things are definitely the big pains. Alright. Bag it up. Oh, it's corrosive. Thank you. Um, I should have changed the camera back. This is what it looks like, this is what the game is set to normally. That the camera is not locked to the center of your vehicle. And this is why I have it locked using control. Whoa, 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 I think this stuff is explosive. Oh, come on. Thank you. Corrosive. And the whole um, acquisition freelance mode is very interesting. It's, they pretty much gave you a lot of ways to play the game. So if you really enjoy Brigador, you're going to have a lot of content to get. Alright, so we'll blow that up. That's two. These are these damn tanks. Oh, there's the cyberpunk music kicking in. There we go. We seem to be doing a lot better this time. 
Okay, so there goes the comm tower. Whoa, 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 whoa. Do not want to be near that thing that's about to blow up. It could probably kill me. Whoop, as you can see. Hi. Any more depots are left. Uh, but I can't use that one. I could also ram. What the? That was weird. Oh, ramming into the cars is killing me? Damn. I think we're about to die. Okay. Let's get little shield bits. Close. Let's get to the emergency escape. Whew. Can we do this? Oh. That's what I'm talking about, they're having a good gun. I wonder if part of the difficulty is the fact that we're using a keyboard and mouse interface, and this would be easier with an analog stick. Because again, the analog stick means that you're using one finger for movement in all directions compared to this key to the keyboard where it is using four fingers to do one action. Not to mention the fact that it is a rotational control. I just horribly missed there. There we go. And if you get behind, it's not so bad. Trouble coming over here. I think I just missed horribly there. Ramming speed. guys up there. <laughs> Something just did a lot of damage and then it got blown up. Or well, these guys are suicide bombers. Yeah, and that's a good point, Mr. Um, Unimport. About 
you need the the mouse is definitely better for you know this instant aiming. An analog stick would definitely be too slow for what they're trying to do here. Yeah, that's where we have a camouflage. Don't mind me. Peek a boo. That was a horrible miss once again. I think what makes it very challenging to control is the fact that the game definitely feels button heavy. You have, of course, movement, which is rotational. You have a special weapon assigned to the middle mouse. Two weapons there. Shift lets you crouch. Space lets you do a special. Control locks and unlocks. And of course, E automatically adjusts your vehicle as so. I kind of wish the game was a little bit brighter. I know they're trying to go for like the cyberpunk aesthetic, but it's kind of hard to see where things are sometimes. That's a whole lot, guys. And the complexity is definitely hidden underneath the isometric controls and I mean isometric graphics here. Stuff like again aiming from the back, using specials. Okay, so that's everything I need for the objective. Now we gotta survive. Oh crap. <laughs> Let's get the hell out of here. Uh oh. No oh, crap. Yeah, the game will probably do it with being just like a tad brighter, just so we can see, especially where a lot of these walls are. And the isometric camera is not doing the game favors of trying to see where everything is. Alright, so we hide here. Take him out. I think this time we'll head, now that we know the exits to the northeast, See, we can make it that way first. Oops, gone. side and bam now, I know the game has not been doing well I'm just watching the twitch stream while I'm playing it was on early access in I know it got a lot of awards, a lot of press during the early acts, and then the game kind of just like disappeared. And I actually found it through one of my um, Twitter contacts, which is why I decided to give it a shot. 
Oh, we can do that. I'm not a fan of these controls, that's probably why I'm not loving the game completely, but you can tell the developers really wanted to make this kind of game. With the entire lore and all that crazy stuff. Oh, you can just go right up here. I'll take that. Second, I think that was another suicide bomber there. Got this. I'm trying to shoot through the wall. And you can see how much damage I'm doing to the back compared to the front of these bigger machines. It feels like Hidden complexity is like the M.O. for Brigador here. Uh -oh. Back it up. I'm not sure what happened there, I think they just killed each other. Should be enough to get out. Come on. There we go. Whew. <laughs> All right, two away. Can we do it? Yes, yeah, so we got something really small and then our heavy weapon. Yeah, that would qualify as a heavy weapon. Oh! What the hell was that? I think this thing blew up. Oh yeah, these are explosive barrels. So, right, so we actually have a. T oh. So this is another weapon you have to put on the cursor or put on the enemy to hit him with. Charge. That's not gonna do it. Okay, we can 
stomp once again. Shit. Oh boy. Death by stomp. These guys I can crouch. stepped on. Stomping on these guys just does massive damage as long as they're smaller than you. Although we even saw those little robots doing a lot of hits there. It would be nice to have a Gundam game for the PC, an actual decent one. I don't know, did they ever port the Gundam Dynasty Warrior games to the PC? I heard they were just okay. I know a Harebrained Scheme's working on their um, battle tech, I think. But that's going to be more tactical and not real time. Alright, so we can actually just blow this up because I don't need it. Alright, so these are substations. And they should go up in a big pool. Okay, maybe not. Okay, that drops the walls. Can't use that ammo. Got everyone alerted to me. Again, they're coming to their stomped on doom. Uh, heavy gear? I've heard of the heavy gear games. I don't, I'm pretty sure I have not played any of them. That's a big robot. Okay. He just got crazy here. Alright, so one more structure and we got this done. Is this the second or the 
Or the second to the last, or I think this is the second or third to last mission we're on. Okay, so if I blow up all these shit, I should disable the alarm. Those are damn howitzers. This would be one of those games I think co-op would be really amazing on it. But I just have no idea how they would do it with this tech without locking the camera. And friendly fire would cause so many problems. There we go. That up. should be like right up here. Right. Okay, so final campaign mission. tank. This can't be good, right? Speaking of mech games, I really love the Armor Core series. But Armored Core, there we go, back in the day. Third person, you basically build your mechs, and you customize them all you want. I don't think it ever made to the PC. I cannot remember the name of the developer, though, who did it. Alright, so these damn things are just causing trouble. I just horribly whiff there. There we go, that's better. When down, just backpedal for victory. Probably should have laid down a smoke field there. Okay, there we go. Ah, yep. Right, so Armor Core was made by From Software. Wow. Talk about your uh, small circles there. There, of course, are the Souls developer. What the hell is that? Could really do with some poison smoke right about now. Okay, we're still in this. So 
bit of trouble. Fuck! It's so easy to just get screwed around with your controls when you're used to moving and aiming differently. Let's see, can we do this? Should be coming. That should make it easier for me. Peekaboo. Okay, we're still in. be an artillery gun. Let's try you. And everything that we see here I can unlock and do more with in freelance mode. I think this game could really have done with an achievement system, considering there's so many ways you could build it around it with the freelance mode. Like get achievements for completing specific challenges and stuff like that. Now that I can move and shoot independently, this should be at least a little bit easier. Hopefully. I saw my stomp. Okay, where are you guys? Charge! Crazy laser he's using. <laughs> In the smoke. Dear life. I know it will never happen, but I would love to have like Demon Souls and Bloodborne on the PC. It's all about from software. But I think they are just locked to Sony. Right. Oh god. This could be bad. The alarm's already gone off, so it doesn't make any sense to worry about now. Well, this is the final story mission. We can do it. Stomp fight. Alright. Gotcha. Two more 
captains and we got the win. definitely a ton of lore like what we're doing in these missions but again it's never really spelled out like in the missions themselves haha uh -huh, just blew yourself up like I haven't done that before substation. So that's all the campaign missions. So I think the number of districts is the number of levels you can play when you unlock this specific operation. Yes, yeah, so that's three. So I mean, look at this. Like the highest one is 39. Uh, districts you can play it with. Again, you have to unlock all the vehicles, all the equipment. Like you could really, again, with the achievement system, you could set up something crazy like pick small, uh, use a small uh, vehicle and use X equipment and beat a district of this size or something like that. bigger. Again, everyone has different stats, different stuff like this. So the game was definitely meant to be replayed like this, but as I said in my video spotlight for people uh, watching this on YouTube, uh, uh, yeah, you unlock you can unlock everything by playing both freelance and then the campaign missions. As long as you're earning money, that's what you use to unlock everything. And then there's all this lore to find. So, I mean, there's a ton of stuff to find. Uh, no, I haven't tried the prism yet. Let's see. There it is. Again, it has different weapons. Everything has different shields. So I need a heavy. Then you have different weapons. They all have different stats to them. So the game was, again, it was clearly made for you to just keep replaying it, trying new stuff and all that. But I just don't know if people would be willing to just keep playing around with things just limited to their own computer. Like this is a game again that would scream like an achievement system or a scoring system with your friends, stuff like that. Like set up challenges 
you know, I beat so and so with this pilot, with this setup, and you know, see if you can beat my thing, something like that. So what we can do can unlock the different abilities here. That camouflage. Weapons against stun. I mean there's just a ton of stuff here. Yeah, daily run mode would also be something really useful. Um, Shrixa Blas said in chat, I'm sorry if I mispronounced that name. I mean, you can see the fact that we really didn't earn a lot of money, so, let's see. So we go freelance mode, these are all the pilots we've unlocked. I mean, look at the story. I mean, there's a whole lot here to really dig into. Uh, so, from chat, they would like an achievement system, but it will be a very lengthy process. And it's on the to-do list along with trading cards. I mean, again, this is one of those games, I think... I hate to say it because I know the dollars are having trouble selling it, but it kind of feels like they put the cart before the horse. They design like a lot of these base systems, but there's nothing here to really tie it together and then tie it to other players. I mean, this is a very extensive unlocking system, but at the moment there's just no reason, unless you really, really love this game, to go through this all. If there was multiplayer or scores or achievement, I mean, you could really spend hours upon hours playing it. But I just don't know if and I, I agree with you guys about the gameplay first. I mean, that is the main point. But it feels like they really put a ton of time into this freelance and acquisitions mode. And it kind of feels like it's just hanging out in the ether. I just don't think the progression model is there, again, to hook someone who doesn't already love this. And I think that may be why I'm approaching a little bit harsher on that front. Like, as I said, I like this game, but... I don't love it. I think, again, controls... I think I'm with... Um, Hembon, with controls being a little bit more cumbersome. Yeah, the game was definitely designed for a single player. Let's see... Yeah, the pilot unlocks are supposed to be your main progression. So what does that mean? Like, obviously... Uh, you must have played Mr. Un Unimportant. What does... Like the difficulty means, start difficulty, max difficulty, stuff like that. And then increase per level. Piles control difficulty, yeah. You can see the victory bonus going up. Again, lots of story, lots of stuff here. Okay, so enemies that spawn are dependent on the current difficulty. So if you want to make the game harder, you pick a more expensive pile or one with a higher difficulty. So again, we go freelance mode. And because I haven't unlocked all this stuff, I'm limiting what I can do. 
and we have different districts. And so this is freelance mode. We basically take everything you've put together and just go nuts. Sometimes there's some of the operations that you leave early. Others you just have to complete them all in one sitting. Again, you can choose every little detail of how you want to play. And because both these weapons are, are green, it means I have to find a green depot to refuel them both. Well, if I had different color ones, it would be used differently and stuff like that. Oh, here are the enemies. Yeah, definitely. There's a real different feel when you're going lighter and you have to make more use of stealth. Again, there's just so much complexity hidden under the surface with Brigador. Once you start messing with the different pilots, trying to get a machine, equipment combination you like. So I complete the objective. As long as I complete one objective, I can leave the level. But if I want more money, I have to stay and do as much as I can. Here they all are. This must be suicidal guys. Yep. Yep, you could pretty much blow up the entire level if you want to spend enough time in it. And just enjoy listening to the music while you blow stuff up. So these are some substations. are so slow but that's deliberate on account of having the tanks be the speedier option oh the loyalist group is not in freelance mode I'll level this stuff for a little extra money. <laughs> so when you complete the area... You can quit move on. I'm not sure what random it is. Oh, you can choose which one you want to do next. Oh, random must just select a one of the random districts to go through. And again, your stats are preserved between the levels. 
Oh, 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 wait. It's not the next one blows up. So I really need to find a refueling. You think so, Mr. Uh, Unimport? Uh, the release was a little bit rushed. I'm kind of surprised there wasn't more buzz for the game. It didn't seem like... Like when I was looking it up, I saw the announce of early access. But it didn't really seem like there was much press everywhere else. And when you have a game like this that is a niche experience, not getting that early press can be a huge killer. I could see multiplayer just really doing a whole lot of fun here. But well, that would be just a nightmare, I bet, to program it in at this point. Homes. Everything feels like big and deliberate with these mechs. Yeah, that is true. Sometimes when it comes to game development, you're sometimes forced to release it early, earlier than you want. Unless you get a really lucky or really popular game on early access, you could just stay on there for a very long time. But other times you need to get that, uh, the bump of saying, hey, our game is released, in order to hopefully drive sales and get the money you need to finish. Was... Was this a Kickstarter game as well, or... Was it they just went on to early access? So I know I was looking them up. It is a game developed by two brawlers. So I mean, they definitely have the passion to get it done. But it's definitely hard out there for independent developers today, especially if you don't have the name. Uh, you don't have like the name like um, Darkest Dungeon or Clay behind you. You really need to. Wow, with first impressions, and oh yeah, so no Kickstarter early access was about 10 months ago. I agree with you, uh, Strix and Blaza. This is a game that really needs like the polish and the PR bump to really make it work, especially when it is a niche game. Like Darkest Dungeon was also another very niche thing with its hardcore design, but they really hit out of the park with PR and the marketing for the Kickstarter and all that. Yeah, as I said in my video spotlight that's not up yet for those of you watching live, like, this is a game that, I hate to say, it does not make a good first impression. And a lot of the stuff that, you know, that's enjoyable about it, you need to, like, dig into to really get to it. It is good that the game did get out of early access. There's always the other side, I think, when you spend too long in early access and the game just stagnates. And we've seen more than enough early access games that have failed to get out of there. Have I not played any objectives yet? Just like running around smashing random crap. have enough. Yeah, it's definitely getting a lot trickier, even just for early access to, or getting your game on Steam, because Steam really is like the big time. If your game has a poor start, it can just really screw you in so many ways. Ow, 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 ow.
I'm having I'm gonna have a podcast up next week for those of you watching this live that I talked to a guy who just specifically handles indie game PR and we got into a lot of discussion about just how hard it is for independent developers as well as the things that they really need to get done and make some of these games work. And the more niche your idea is, the more it really needs to hit strong. I made a post on Game Wisdom about this a few months ago that most often I will usually figure out most games within one hour and I will usually have a good a representation of the game within 15 minutes. But this is one of those games that um, um, that really doesn't work with a with that 15 minute frame. And again, a lot of the stuff, there's like no mention of it in game. No one would know, you know, what acquisitions are, what freelances. And again, it's just very rough. I think I agree with you guys that it definitely seems like it was put, it was released more out of necessity rather than um, it's, you know, exactly how they like it. So that operation was done. Oh, I guess. So the start definitely must be every time they beat a level, it goes up and then the multiplier will then enhance. So if I start at zero, that means that the first level is going to be ridiculously easy, but if I have a nine district uh, operation, then by the end of it will be super difficult. So seven would start out. Do I have anyone who starts out harder? One. one. So we choose this. And just for the hell of it, we'll play as a small... We'll play as a... this kind of tank. It's gonna be a little bit... We'll start off a lot harder, because we're considered stage 4 now. And get some money. Oh, oh she starts at difficulty, Elia. Ella. I mean, again, the game really lends itself to this kind of long term play. Just making it harder and harder, gain more money. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And of course, shields can be replenished, armor cannot. So I'm pretty much, I think, screwed. And this is the difference between starting at level 4 compared to starting at level 0. Yeah, we're dead. And I can't, and I bet it's gonna be a whole lot crazier if we start with someone. Where is it? Level 11 and just go crazy like that. Alright, but we are approaching the two hour mark, so I think I'm going to wrap it up for the stream tonight. Um, if more people want to see videos or streams of Brigador, let me know. Because again, this is a game that it lends itself well to more of a long-term play than just going through the campaign. But I'm going to wrap it up here. So, for those of you who've been enjoying this live or recorded, thanks so much for tuning in. For those of you on Twitch, be sure to subscribe to the channel to get the latest updates when I do my streams. If you've been enjoying this on YouTube, be sure to share with your friends and of course like and subscribe. Everybody check out game-wisdom.com where I examine the art and science of games. You can find me on Twitter under GWBicer to get all updates as well as my random thoughts throughout the day. 
and you can find me on Patreon under Game Wisdom. And aid donations would be greatly appreciated to allow me to keep putting out great content and even do more with streaming and con and stuff on the site. So, um, again, if you'd like to see more, let me know. But otherwise, have a great night, and I will see you all next time. Take care.